In the early hours of the morning of Sunday, 12th of June, 1921, at Brackley House in Bomboy, the nine members of the household of John Finlay, the retired Church of Ireland Dean of Lachlan, were roused by noise outside. At around 2 a.m., a large group of men came to the door and took everyone outside. Eight of the household, but not John Finlay himself, were brought to another house about a mile away while the men burned down Brackley House. Uh, the, the household, the Finlay household, managed to get away from this house a few hours later, only to find the remains of John Finlay lying in his nightshirt on the grass close to the door of the house. Finlay's death at the hands of the IRA caused an outcry in the area and even led to questions being asked in the House of Lords about it. My name is Brendan Scott and I'm a historian and residence at Cavan County Council. And this short webisode will investigate the death of John Finlay, one of the most notorious events in Cavan's War of Independence. But who was John Finlay and how did the retired Dean of Lachlan end up in Cavan? Well, John Finlay was born in Cavan in and around 1841 or 1842. He was the son of Dr. James Finlay, uh, who, who practiced in Dublin, but had links with Cavan. And as we'll see later on, uh, there's some confusion over the year of John's birth. Was it 1841 or 42? We're not entirely sure. Now, John's father, as I said, the doctor, uh, Dr. James Finlay, uh, had, uh, although he lived and worked in Dublin, uh, his family had links with Brackley in Bombay for many, many years. And they were landowners in the area. And one of them had actually been sheriff of Cavan in the early 19th century. So there was a long a, a long-standing link there between uh, between the Finleys and, and Brackley. Um, John himself studied in Trinity College Dublin and graduated BA in 1866, completing his uh, divinity testimonium as part of his clerical training uh, the following year. And in that same year, in 1867, Finlay was appointed to his first clerical position, uh, that of a deacon in the Diocese of Ossory. And if we take a look at some of the positions he held uh, over the next uh, 45 years or so, Finlay held a number of uh, uh, Church of Ireland appointments, mostly, as you can see, in Lachlan uh, Diocese, uh, which is around some kind of Carlow area. Uh, and these culminated in his appointment as Dean of Lachlan in 1895, which was a position that he held until his, his retirement in 1912. In 1871, John married Isabella Smith King, who was the daughter of William Smith King, who became Dean of Lachlan himself in 1887 until he died in 1890. And it seems that familial links may have aided Finley's rise through the church ranks uh, in, in Lachlan. Uh, and and uh, you, like a lot of the jobs uh, that his father-in-law had before him, he comes into a lot of these church positions. And while in Carlo, Finley seems to have been a popular man who served on many public boards and who had the confidence of uh, many people from many walks of life, from Catholic and Protestant communities. He was uh, a well-liked man. Uh, while he served as dean, uh, Finley did a lot of work uh, improving the cathedral there uh, and donated a plot of land adjoining the cathedral known as the Dean's Field to the cathedral parish. And part of this has since been used as, as, uh, 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 to, uh, uh, as an addition to the existing graveyard that's there already. Now, the Finleys don't seem to have had any children, or certainly any who survived, uh, but they were far from alone in 1911. Uh, when the census of that year uh, names a number of people who live with them, uh, including uh, Lucy King and Martha Jameson, uh, who were living with them in Carlow. Uh, they're listed as, as uh, servants. Um, later reports list Lucy King as being a sister-in-law of the Finleys, but she's down here as being uh, the cook. Um, Interestingly, actually, Martha Jameson's uh, place of birth was Belturbet, so she was uh, down in Carlow uh, with these people. Now, Lucy's children, Lucy King's children, uh, Anna, Herbert and William were all living uh, in, in, in Carlow uh, with the Finleys in 1911, and we will be meeting Herbert again shortly in our story. Now, uh, this is, is Finley here. He's, he's a real 
classic kind of late Victorian Edwardian uh, church uh, churchman. He just look, looks like a real clerical figure. And uh, even though he looks maybe slightly stern in this picture, he was supposed to be a very, very likable, uh, warm gentleman. Um, sometime shortly after his retirement in 1912, or perhaps in 1913, as one historian has recently suggested, uh, Finley and his wife moved permanently to Brackley House, uh, where, according to his coachman there, Joseph Robinson, he became very popular and very well liked in the locality. Uh, this is a sentiment that was later shared by Bernard Cassidy, uh, his neighbour. But Finley's popularity doesn't seem to have been exaggerated by his employee, and the RIC also noted that Finley was of a very kindly disposition, on good terms with all of his neighbours, and uh, so far as can be ascertained, he had no enemies. So this is a quote from the RIC uh, in the aftermath of, uh, of Finley's death. Uh, a statement in the House of Lords, uh, also highlights Finley's popularity in, in the area, noting his generosity to the poor. And uh, the local cler Catholic clergy as well, following Finley's death, also mentioned his kindly relations with everyone in the locality. So if he was such a popular man, why did this attack take place in, in the first place? British military records from the 27th of June, 1921, so a couple of weeks after this incident occurred, states that two members of the auxiliaries uh, who were stationed in Casa Sanderson had visited Finlay sometime before the attack. And Joseph Robinson, Finlay's coachman, uh, he later dated that event to about three weeks before the attack. So in late May 1921, these two auxiliaries came to uh, Finlay's house in, at, at Brackley. And rumours went, went around then uh, that the house was going to be taken uh, and occupied and used as a barracks, uh, as an RIC barracks. And it seems at this point then that the IRA had decided to take matters into their own hands and burn the house down before it could be occupied uh, by the RIC or the Black and Tans or whoever it was going to be. And this theory is borne out by a note uh, on the archives, uh, on the activities, I should say, of the Curla IRA battalion during this period, uh, which is contained in the wonderful archive of material recently donated to Calvin Library Service by Frankie Dolphin. Uh, and in this list, uh, the incident is noted as follows. And this is a quote, 12th of June, 1921, destroying House of Brackley, about to be occupied by auxiliaries. Now, no mention is made in that record of Finley's death, but a, a separate recollection written by Frank Dolphin, who is a, a senior IRA member from Ballyconnell, uh, and which is also part of this archive of material that's been donated to the library. Uh, he noted of the incident, uh, and this is a quote, sadly, Dean Finley lost his life. So uh, th there is that mention in, in the archive of this. Now, after uh, Finley's uh, death, a court of inquiry in lieu of an inquest took place at Swanland Bar on the 14th of June, so two days after uh, uh, Finley's death, and a number of Finley's household gave witness statements as to what happened. A, a parlour maid there called Mabel Brown stated that at 2am, having heard noises downstairs, Isabella Finley, who's uh, John's wife, had risen Mabel uh, from her bed and told the maid to come out quickly, they're going to burn the house. And that's a quote. Uh, Mabel uh, estimated that there were about 20 men at the house armed with rifles, uh, revolvers and iron bars. She, Mabel, and the other seven occupants uh, that, that, were, that were there uh, were led to a house owned by Bernard Cassidy about a mile away, where guards could be heard outside. And Bernard Cassidy, in his uh, 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 statement, uh, said that about 2.30 in the morning, men came to his door demanding that he open that door. When he did so, the party from Brackley House were pushed inside and he was told not to open up the door again. Now, another witness uh, statement, it was given by Joseph Robinson, who we've mentioned before was Finley's uh, coachman. And he estimated that there were about 30 men there, not the 20 that Mabel Brown thought were there. But otherwise, his account is quite close uh, to that of, of Mabel's. So we, what he says happens is when he got downstairs, he waited a moment, to, he, want, he got dressed before he, he came out of the room. Uh, if, when, when Joseph gets downstairs, he says John Finley had already gone down in his night clothes to investigate what was going on. And by the time Joseph gets down, there is a pool of blood in the hall, but no sign of John. Isabella, 
asked the man, where was the dean? Uh, to which one of the men replied, do not get excited. The dean has gone on. He is all right. And that's, again, a, a direct quote. When the group got to Cassidy's, uh, uh, they were told not to open the door for 20 minutes. And at about 4 a.m., so they waited a wee bit longer than 20 minutes, understandably, I think, Joseph left Cassidy's house and travelled to another house owned by somebody called John Robinson, who was presumably a relative of, of Joseph's. And they went back to the house along with Mrs. King, uh, the cook, uh, and uh, Bernard Cassidy, only to find the house on fire. And they discovered the Dean's remains uh, on the lawn uh, from where they moved him from the lawn to the coach house. It seems as well that Finley's uh, body had been moved to that location on the lawn from somewhere else because there was no blood uh, in, in that immediate vicinity. Further evidence again was taken four days after that on the 18th of June and again in Swanland Bar, this time from Herbert King, who had, as I say, had been associated with the Finleys for at least 10 years, having uh, lived with them in Carlow in 1911. Uh, by 1921, he was 14 years old, Herbert, and he was working as a shop assistant in Swanland Bar. And he would come back on the weekends to Brackley and he would stay uh, the Friday night and the Saturday night in Brackley before going back up to Swad, uh, where I assume he was probably living uh, with the family uh, whose shop it was. Uh, but he obviously considered Brackley to be his home. And uh, when in Brackley, he would share a room with Joseph Robinson, the coachman. Uh, and his evidence, again, closely resembles that uh, which was given by Joseph Robinson. Uh, but what is surprising about his uh, evidence, and remember he's only 14, is he names 11 of the assailants as local people whom he claimed uh, to recognize, and he knew who they were, and he names them. And the full list of those names can be read in the book uh, recently published uh, by Eunan O'Halpin and Dahi O'Curran uh, called The Dead of the Irish Revolution, and you can see all the names there. Uh, and one of these men, uh, according to uh, Herbert, had worked in Finley's garden about three years earlier, uh, and Herbert believes that the dean would have recognized this man. Uh, Herbert also claimed, again, as Mabel did, that a number of these guys were carrying iron bars. Uh, one of them was carrying an iron bar, which Herbert figured was about 18 inches long and about three quarter inches wide, which coincidentally was the width of the wound at the base of Finley's skull, as we'll see in a moment. Uh, Herbert also saw one of the men with a five gallon container, uh, which contained something which smelled like petrol. Um, Joseph Robinson also came back in uh, to this uh, uh, inquiry on the 18th. So he'd already given his first statement on the 14th and he comes back in again on the 18th and gives more information. And he again names a number of the assailants, which he didn't do the first time, but he does the second time. Uh, and he, he ends that second statement with the following explanation as to why he hadn't named, mentioned these names the first time. Robinson was local and he would have obviously known a lot of these guys. Uh, and he says, I did not tell you this, the names on the 14th, as I knew it was an IRA outrage and I feared the consequences of telling. I have since made up my mind to tell the truth. Now, it was never ascertained who struck the fatal blow uh, uh, against Finlay, uh, although one suggestion has recently been made by Eunan O'Halpin and Dahi O'Curran in that book I just mentioned, uh, The Dead of the Irish Revolution. But nevertheless, the men on the evidence given by Herbert and Joseph were arrested and they were held in Belfast um, awaiting trial until early 1922 when they were released under the general amnesty which followed the signing of the treaty. Uh, the release was criticised in a House of Lords statement in May 1922 which noted that no person has since been brought to justice by the Irish provisional government for the murder. Now one of the men released in 1922 died in 1924 from TB which he contracted in Belfast jail. There was also some confusion about the cause of John Finley's death. Dr. William O'Rourke, uh, who examined the body at 6 p.m. on the 12th of June, so uh, in the evening I, uh, of, of, of the day in which Finley died, and who two days later carried out a post-mortem examination of the body, he makes no mention of a gunshot wound. 
Instead, he believed that a fracture extending from an external wound on the back of his skull to the spinal cord had been caused by what he says was a blunt instrument being driven into the skull with considerable force. And he says it could not have been caused by Finley falling onto a spike, for example, except if Finley had fallen from a considerable height. So he's basically saying that somebody attacked him with this, with some implement uh, and drove it into the back of his skull. Uh, his death, O'Rourke concluded, would have been instantaneous. Now, O'Rourke was also the registrar, and he noted in the civil registration of Finley's death that the cause was shock and hemorrhage caused by punctured wound of base of the skull. But a note in an article published in the Breffany Journal in 1971 about Templeport Cemetery inscriptions uh, that was put together by uh, T.C. Maguire, he mentions in it that, that he, he, he notes um, uh, Finley's grave. And he, mentions, he has a little note beside Finley's grave, uh, the, the writing on Finley's grave. And he says, one member of the volunteer group which raided Brackley House told me T.C. Maguire, that Dean Finley's death was an accident and not murder. He himself was present when the shot that killed the Dean was accidentally discharged from a gun. So one person was saying, well, it, 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 it was, it, it was um, a, a blow to the back of the skull, uh, which penetrated the back of the skull, i.e. what he's basically getting at is an iron bar, um, which some of them had. But then Maguire, which... 50 years on says it was a gunshot so uh, i'd be more inclined to go with o'rourke uh, uh, who examined the body there and then there's also further confusion about finley's age at the time of his death his biography in jb leslie's clerical biographies list claims that he was 79 when he died the northern whig uh, local newspaper uh, said that finley was 80 years old but their report also said that the house was called Bracken House and not Brackley. So you can't really take them at face value either. Other newspapers which reported the incident recorded his death as being anything between 78 and 80. So some say 78, some say 79, some say 80. Um, William O'Rourke in the civil register, uh, in the civil registration of his death, notes Finley's age as being 80. Now, in, in the 1911 census, his age was given as 68. So 10 years later, he would have been 78. Um, and his gravestone, which would have been erected in consultation with his wife, says that he died at age, age 78. And Finley's coffin also bore the same age, 78. And we can only assume that his wife knew his age. So I would imagine, again, that he was probably 78. Now, Finley's death, as I've said, made the national news with widespread condemnation of the act. Uh, one typical report uh, from uh, the Belfast newsletter on the 14th of June, 1921, carried the headline 50 against one. Uh, the paper uh, reporting that a band of 50 men had uh, attacked Brackley, which was a much inflated uh, figure, which was quoted in a number of papers, including the Anglo Celts. The Celts headline regarding the case on the 18th of June, 1921 read, Bomboy tragedy fate of venerable dean the celt also noted finley's close friendship with the catholic bishop of kilmore uh, bishop finnegan and they also recorded the comments made by judge brown at the sitting of the calvin quarter sessions in which he rounded on those responsible for the attack in no uncertain manner saying that words cannot express one's uh, detestation of such an act the attack on the House and Finley's demise were also, as I say, discussed in the House of Lords uh, in, in, in uh, Westminster. Now, the household, the survivors, the eight other people uh, who were now made homeless, Bar Herbert, who had probably still, he was able to live up in Swan and Bar, they were housed by Robert Henry Johnson of Bombay House, who was another landowner in the area. But on the Monday morning, uh, and John died on the Sunday morning, Isabella was back at Brackley House, which was burned at this stage. Uh, just the walls were standing, stating that she had to be there to arrange her husband's funeral. Uh, this, I don't know, uh, the, the way it's reported is sort of implying that she was suffering from shock in some way, some delayed shock. Uh, now, following the post-mortem, Finley was laid out overnight in Swan Lombard Church uh, before being brought by motor car to the ruins of Brackley and on from there by Harris to St. Peter's Church in Templeport. Finley's funeral, unsurprisingly, was a large one and notable for the presence of three local Catholic priests 
at it, which demonstrated again uh, the regard in which uh, the old Church of Ireland dean had been held. And those Catholic priests published a letter in the Anglo-Celt condemning uh, Finlay's death, uh, writing that such was the respect in which Dean Finlay was held that there is not a single neighbour of his who doesn't view the crime with the same horror as we. The Northern Whig um, a, a, a newspaper reported later on on the 25th of October 1921 uh, that John's widow Isabella received a compensation claim of £1,500 resulting from John's death and for £13,200 for the burned down house. Presumably from this compensation, the house was rebuilt and Isabella died there of natural causes on the 12th of July 1928, aged 86 years, and she was buried beside her husband in St. Peter's in Temple Court. Now, John was memorialized in a number of ways, and this is his uh, headstone, uh, as I say, at St. Peter's in Temple Court. And it, it reads, here lies the body of John Finley, Dean of Lachlan, who was murdered in his own home at Brackley on Sunday, June the 12th, 1921, age 78. He died in sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ erected by Isabella, his loving and happy wife for over 50 years, who died on the 12th of July, 1928. And then a plaque inside the church itself reads, uh, and I got this uh, from the bomboy.com uh, website. Uh, it reads, Ad Gloriam Dei, uh, this tiling was laid to the memory of the very Reverend John Finley, Dean of Lachlan, by members of this parish and some friends. A stained glass window in St. Peter's as well also refers uh, to Finley's uh, uh, death. And I also got this photograph and the next one uh, from bomboy.com as well. Um, and, and you can see there uh, uh, from love to God's house and in loving, we're missing a bit there, who entered into rest Sunday 12th of uh, June 12th, 1921. So uh, that's referring uh, to Finley as well. Uh, and in Carlo, it's not only in Calvin he was remembered, uh, in Carlo he is also remembered. And uh, the pulpit in the cathedral church uh, is also a, a memorial uh, to Finley. And there is also a Dean Finley Memorial Scholarship, which is awarded there by the diocesan council. Now, I don't think that the men who burned Brackley House that night had any intention of killing anyone, uh, least of all John Finley. But a momentary loss or, or a loss of nerve or loss of control resulted in the worst possible outcome for the elderly Dean. Certainly nothing like this was to happen again in Cavan uh, during the War of Independence, uh, at least. And if anyone uh, has any further uh, interest in looking into any of this in any more detail, uh, there are a number of sources that you can check out uh, to find out more about uh, uh, Finley himself and on, on the incident in question. Uh, there's the wonderful uh, lists compiled by J.B. Leslie, uh, which give bio, uh, biographical information uh, uh, on on um, uh, Finley, and you can see that there. Johann Farley's book as well, uh, Royalist Rebels and Revolutionists, also has uh, uh, mentions uh, Finley's death as well. The Anglo Celt again, which is just a treasure trove of information uh, from the time, a wonderful, wonderful source, uh, which gives so much uh, color and detail uh, and on the spot reporting as well. Uh, and as I mentioned already, uh, uh, the uh, article uh, by T.C. McGuire, which was published in the Breffany Journal in 1971, uh, which gives Templeport Cemetery inscriptions and has the note uh, about Finley being shot in it. So that's an important source as well. And then we also have the book uh, written by Una O'Halpin and Dahi O'Koran, uh, uh, The Dead of the Irish Revolution, uh, which has you know, an incredible amount of information in there as well. There's also a, a, a short article written lately by Gordon Lucy, uh, which went online at newsletter.co.uk uh, on the 14th of June, 9, uh, 2021. Uh, so just two days after um, uh, 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 Finley's 100th anniversary, the centenary of, of his death. Um, and then finally, uh, the wonderful images uh, that I got there from bomboy.com, which is a great website, lots of information on there as well, and you know, really, really interesting stuff as well. Um, so just in conclusion again, uh, my thanks as always uh, to Calvin County Council, uh, particularly to the library service uh, for all of their continued help and support, in particular uh, Emma Clancy, uh, the county librarian, uh, Sinead McArdle and Jonathan Smith, 
uh, who, who are just such a great help and everyone else uh, that helps along the way as well. I truly appreciate all the help and support uh, I've been getting and all the wonderful feedback uh, that I've been getting from the uh, uh, from those webisodes that have already been made available. Uh, so in, in, in that way as well, I just want to thank you all as well for tuning in. And uh, I hope you've, you've enjoyed them and uh, you continue to enjoy them and that uh, we'll see each other again soon. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm.